Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is going to be a fun interview because Sunny, this woman is named Sunny, and I don't know who named her Sunny, but she is really Sunny. That's how she is. She's, she's bubbly, and if you ever had a daughter, you'd want to name her Sunny if she were like this. It's Sunny Laval. And I want to welcome you to our show, Sonny. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. You know, one thing that uh, sticks out for me when you're around is you are the most positive person. When you get up in the morning, are you positive the same way? I try. I try. I tend to be, yes. I, I Most definitely. That's good. I try to show my son that it's better to wake up happy. Yes. Right. That's true. Well, you do have that magic charm. And I wanted to invite Sonny to be our guest because as a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist, she is uh, very special in what she does. It's not just casual. She doesn't just put you on a diet, and I'm going to let her tell you about that. But we invited her to our upcoming Cure Symposium, which will be on Saturday, May the 6th at Palm Beach State College in Boca Raton. And there'll be so many other speakers that it would be really foolish for anyone who's listening now and doesn't, if you don't know about it, not attending, because we are very privileged to have people like Sunny to come and just share all their knowledge and anything they think would enhance your life. So that's why we're having some of our speakers on the show, and we started now with Sunny. So I'm, I wanted to talk a little bit with you, Sunny, that. Well, let me just tell people, in case you're thinking and you don't know about it, it's from 9 to 3.30, and it's at Palm Beach State College, as I said, in Boca Raton, and you can get more information by going to, well, let me just have you call if you'd like to do that. It's 561-864-1101. Remember, this is Pencil Talk Radio. You have to have your pencils there because we're going to give you a lot of information. 561-864-1101. Or you can go online to cure-symposium.com. Okay, now we're going to get back to the star here of our show, Sunny Laval. Okay, Sunny, so we know you were born to a fantastic mother because we know who she is. But uh, when were you interested in eating the right food? You know, it started at a, at a, a young age. Uh, my, both my parents being physicians always... Uh, emphasize the importance of health, um, you, you know, back when I didn't really know how important it was to be healthy at that time. I love to eat, um, you know, foods that obviously weren't the best for me. And I did actually grow up to be you know, overweight. I was a, an overweight child and um, went into my early teenage years. And my father, uh, he really is the one that installed um, good nutrition in me and really made me open my eyes to really what I was eating and how it was making me feel. Because uh, even even back then, I could see that um, some foods, even at that time, made me a little bit, I don't know, a bit angrier or or more irritable or stressed out. And 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 I can see that 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 relation with food started back then, and I see it now even to this day. So um, when I was in college, I was at the University of Florida, and like all you know, young adults struggle to really find what their you know what their what their lifelong journey is. And uh, I just went with my passion. I, I worked out more. I started reading labels and kind of self-taught. And I said, you know what, I'm going to take classes. And that's, and that's really what I did. And I, I found my passion. And I, and I said, oh, well, I can make a career out of this, helping um, not only myself but others through, um, through, through nutrition. And it's been, you know, uh, the best thing I could do because um, I know that, that, that it's my uh, journey to help people. Um, and um, I practice what I preach to this day. And so... Um, I take it, I take, I take, uh, you know, as my dad used to say, Sonny, you walk the walk and talk the talk. Well, I, I would, I would feel that I wasn't doing my job if I didn't do that. So that's well, a little bit of a, of a history. That's good. So you briefly went over about people not being happy when they do eat certain things, but they eat it anyway. But you deal with people who really aren't happy and who are eating a lot because they actually go for surgical procedures to help them. Tell us about the whole mental and physical, how that all goes. Right. So for the past almost five years, I've been working more with a bariatric nutrition, which really has to do with bariatric surgery. 
uh, people that have weight loss surgery uh, for um, morbid obesity. And these are uh, surgeries that really they're lifelong um, changes. These are, um, you know, that these will be changes that these patients have to make for the rest of their life. Uh, and so they make that choice. And I help them pre and post surgery, um, making sure that they, number one, know that, that the surgery is only going to be a tool to assist them. So I, that's one thing, a huge thing that I uh, stress to all of these patients wanting surgery is that this surgery is only a tool and they have to really do the work and do what everybody else has to do to, to, to stay lean and healthy and, and, and exercise and eating well. That, that's very important. And some people don't think that um, that's going to be the case and then they find themselves regaining weight. So that's where I come in. I really do my best to hold their hand, uh, you know, during the whole process, roughly a year. Um, I offer more of a concierge-based uh, nutrition approach where they really have access to me not only for their uh, pre, uh, pre-op pre nutrition eval and their post-op, but really when they need me, they can call me or text me. Uh, so they feel that they have somebody really holding their hand and they feel better about that. Uh, so I'm happy to offer that uh, because I really want it to be uh, these, these tools and in, in these lifelong changes they learn so they can take it with them. So behavior modification isn't it very psychological, and how do you deal with that? Oh, it is very much so. And good thing that I work hand-in-hand with uh, my mother, Dr. Sherry Thurlop, who is a brilliant uh, psychologist. And she'll be able to tell you more, but as a nutrition, um, as a nutritional professional looking, looking at the whole um, cycle, I, you couldn't have one without the other because behavior modification is so, so um you know, fierce. And I feel that the vast majority of these patients have lost their connection with their body and mind. And, um, you know, they just don't recognize, um, you know, what their body is telling them um, in regards to maybe being full or, you know, eating, eating in excess and things like that. So very, very large behavior modification. Well, it's, it's one thing, you know, when you watch television, And you see people being, you know, all sorts of companies advertising. I lost 45 pounds in two months or whatever they did. And, oh, and look at me now. And, well, and and they're eating prepared food. But what happens after they lose the food? They really haven't learned how to eat, have they? (laughs) Right, 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 right. And and how I really uh, approach um, eating healthy and, and losing weight is really, it doesn't have to be so hard or require you know, you, you to give up things that you love to eat. You know, it's about making smart choices uh, to build an overall healthy uh, dietary pattern in your life. And so it's individualized. You know, I, I sit down and I really get to know the person and really find out, you know, what is it that they love, you know, and, and, and really note to them that, you know, you'll never, it's not that you won't be able to ever eat these foods. It's just, you know, having everything in a balance. Um, that's a very important thing. And I really stress something called a mindful eating uh, where we really focus on eating um, in the present time rather than, you know, doing other things, you know, in the fast-paced world, which which I think has a lot to do with it as well. You mean actually sitting down at the table and eating by yourself and not watching television or <laughs> being on the phone? Right. Is that what mine? Right, right. Is? I mean, it's, it's such a it's such a foreign thing to most of us. This whole uh, mindful eating thing, but really, just you know, being present with either yourself or someone you're speaking to, and, and actually know and seeing what you're eating. You know, so many times we're on the run, and we don't even know what we're putting in our mouth half the time, um, or we're eating TV, and we, we're just mindlessly eating, mindlessly putting all of these extra calories in our mouth. You know, it's really, um, we just have to stop for a minute, really stop and just, you know, take a breather. You know, um, that's really something that I really uh, can't stress enough. You know, if we all just took a couple moments during the day to really connect with our, our, our bodies, connect with our minds, and breathe, and um, be in the present. And I, and I use that a lot in my um, uh, nutritional um, implementation. So my guest is Sunny Laval, and she's a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist, but she specializes in bariatric nutrition and behavior, uh, lifestyle modification for permanent weight loss. Now, Sunny will be at our 8th. <clears throat> Our 8th Cure Symposium on Saturday, May the 6th at the Palm Beach State College. And that's going to be from 9 to 3.30. She is very beautiful. She's very 
uh, charismatic. So what you hear in the radio is just a teaser because when you're there with her, and last time she was with us, she brought all these kinds of foods that we should, uh, you know, we should think about. I hope that that's that's in your plan because I love oh, what yeah. you did. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> oh, yes. You got people. People <laughs> said, "What do you mean? There, you you brought things out I had never heard of before." Yeah, that's the goal. And so, do you do research? Is that how you learned uh, learned and learn a lot? Yes. Nutrition is an ongoing science, and every day we're learning something new. Uh, and I read, 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 um, whether it be research studies or, you know, um, trials that are going out in the media with, with various things. I, I really keep on things because, you know, every day is changing, and we have to keep up with the Joneses, you know, to keep up with, you know, what's going on. So I can be, um, you know, a good educator, and I know what I'm talking about. And it's fun to me. Um, nutrition is, um, it's a fun science, um, you know, it's, we need it for life and, uh, yeah, that, that's, I, I stay on top of it. So, and I, and I think that should be with every profession. <laughs> of course it should be. Well, while I have you on the phone, uh, on the, of course, this interview, I'm going to ask you a question. There's a big story about, not story, but there's, there are people who buy low fat, no fat and full board. Tell me what one should be doing. Like, and I'll give you an example. I've been buying the full yogurt, you know, a plain yogurt. I, it's not no fat. It's not fat free or anything. Now, I, I look and see the difference. Yes, there is a difference in calories, but somehow I just feel that it's better for me. Is that true? Well, think about it. If, if you have something that they are taking the fat out of, they're actually reducing the fat, they have to replace that fat with something. And what they're going to end up replacing that fat with is sugar. So that really is the problem. And with yogurts in particular, you'll never find a sugar-free yogurt because milk, that it actually has natural sugar called lactose. So you'll never find a, a, a yogurt, even if it's sugar-free or very low sugar, less than about 57 grams per cup. Uh, but, you know, in my opinion, fat is good for us. Fat is not what makes you fat. Sugar makes you fat. That's really a big thing that we have to really get in our heads. And, um, you know, the best thing, like you get the plain, for, for me, the best option would be to get the plain yogurt, but the full fat, and you can add some fresh berries or some natural, you know, soluble fiber uh, or something like that. But when you get these low, low fat items, they're always replacing them or sugar. So that's really the issue. So fat is okay in natural sources. It's the bad fat we want to worry about, things like trans fats and, and baked and processed goods. Um, but it's a very um, interesting, hot topic. You know, fat is all the rage right now. Butter is fat. Um, everything, everyone wants fat, fat, fat. So it's, it's a very interesting topic. I have a lot to say about it. It's a whole other topic. Okay. And eggs, I have to tell you, I crave eggs. So I try to have one egg a day. I usually microwave it or soft boil it or do something or hard boiled egg. And I don't know what this craving is about, but I do remember that my mother, who'd lived to be 94, did have an egg every day, and she also had oatmeal. So maybe she knew something. Well, she did because not only is it the tastiest part, but it has um, so many nutrients in it. The yolk is um, is housed with riboflavin and um, it's biotin, um, which is very and it's a good source of protein. So it it I would really eat the yolk. You know, I um, there's there's a lot of you know. Um, talk about eggs and how if you have high cholesterol, you should only have one egg. Um, there, there's more research that talks about maybe that's not so true. So I say eat the yolk. I say save it. Chock full of vitamins and nutrients. Right. In fact, there was a time when I was dieting on things, and I it pained me to throw the yolks away because you had to only eat the white. I said, oh, oh surely there's something I can do with it. That's the best part. But now, oh, no. I always right. eat, I eat the whole thing. Exactly, and that's where the heart healthy, unsaturated fat, and all the omega three fats, um, especially if you're getting an omega three egg, which is what I recommend everyone oh, yes. to purchase the eggs. Um, but you're really, you're really, don't be afraid of the fat um, in the egg. Um, it's actually a good fat for you, so um, you want that. And let's go now to uh, when you said, and you have a child, and it's very hard, isn't it, to get a child to eat the food that is good when. 
their friends and everyone's eating all this junk? How do you do that? Yes, so my son is three and a half, and when I tell you it is a challenge, an ongoing challenge, but in my experience, well, I've always felt and I've, I've known that, you know, proper nutrition starts at the home. It starts, you know, where, where my son is seeing, you know, what's in the refrigerator, what's in the pantry, what his parents are eating know um, how I cook and I I actually um, am kind of making them booty you know I, I get him involved in my cooking and and let him pour things and he gets into it and then he makes his own booty so with how I do it I let it's an interactive um, approach where he'll make a smoothie and I'll have him pick really helpful fruits in the supermarket and and he knows that's for his smoothie and, and oh. we look forward to it together or you know you know let's eat the rainbow together and we'll make a nice big salad, and I'll have him make it too. And then he feels as though, I'm not saying he'll eat the whole thing, but it really does make it so it's um, more approachable to him. And let me tell you, my son loves salad, loves it. And, um, you know, he, he, there's some vegetables he doesn't love, but I pick, I pick my battles. Um, you know, he, 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 I don't, believe it or not, me as a nutritionist, I don't lock down the... Um, the cookie or, or the occasional sweet, you know, I let him have it. Again, it, everything is in balance. And at this young age, I want to show him that that's really the way. Good for you. Well, he's lucky to have you, Mom. So, Sonny Laval, <laughs> she's a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist. And she specializes in bariatric nutrition. She just told us at the beginning what that all is involved with and uh, behavior and lifestyle modification. So let's just say you wanted to contact her. Let me give you a phone number. It would be 305-948-2332. Is that correct? Yes, that will actually um, forward to my um, another number. You can call that as well as uh, 305-975-3199. Okay, so this is a good way for you to... Uh, Figure out how you can lose weight but eat healthy. That's the most important thing. Um, I have my dog on a diet because I, I inherited the dog. I adopted him, and they used to call him Chunky Charlie because he was really very overweight. And the vet said <laughs> that I should just give him a half a cup of this food in the morning and one in the after, in the evening. And, yes, he walks around hungry, but he's lost about three or four pounds, and for a dog, that's a lot. Yeah, that's actually good. You definitely want to try to keep your um, dog at a healthy weight because his heart will be healthy. Well, and also because how will he be able to walk if he's so heavy? It's not That's good true. for anything. So now he's much better, uh, and, and I'm very happy he does. He looks thinner, but it has it has been hard because when we eat, he sits there and he looks up at us, and that's probably when anyone is on a diet. They just really have to, uh, they have to, have, they have to be motivated. Do you have special tools that you motivate people with? Well, I actually motivate them with their own weight loss progress because it happens. Because I don't, what I what I put my patients on, I really hate to say the word diet. I really teach them how to eat, uh, how to eat in the in the real world. Um, I mean, yes, I have to put my 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 pre surgical uh, patients on a so called diet um, a little bit after as well. But how I work with my general uh, patient clientele is really teaching them about foods, about the, the role of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, why they need them, the types of them. Um, and really, I don't, I don't really say that any food is bad per se. There are better choices. And when they learn, again, the balance of healthy eating, um, when they see the weight loss, that's really their motivation. I, I have calls or texts all the time that say, oh my gosh, I've I, the, the scale wasn't budging, and I, I looked today, and it's six pounds, you know, less. I said, and, 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 and you know, and I say, I told you to just stick through it, you know, stick with it, and 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 be steady and with it. And, and she's highly motivated now. She said it was what a motivator to see that, and, and I get that all the time. And that's really, um, you know, that the best way to motivate them is just to see their own results. And do you also push exercise? I sure do, and it doesn't even mean to you know, join a, join a gym or join CrossFit. I, I really just encourage people to move, move every day, whether that is park farther, take the stairs, uh, walk your dog around the block a couple of times. It all adds up to be active as much as you can every day. And, and if you can go to a gym class and, and I recommend doing something fun, if it's not fun, you're not going to stick with it. 
So pick something that's fun. Um, I have a, I have two, um, I have a client, a husband and wife, and they now do ballroom dancing, and they've both lost in the 30s and 30 pound range, and that's their exercise. So you know, you have to discover that yourself, but just move, move, stop, do something every day. Good advice, and that comes from someone who is very thin. I don't know. I guess you you don't have a, a weight problem. Is because the way you eat, or is is it in your your makeup, your heredity, or no, not it? at all, not at all. Like I said, when you I were was younger, fat when you I started, <laughs> yeah, I struggled uh, being overweight, and really, it's about choosing choosing the right foods and choose, and and having that balance and knowing again which foods make me feel not so um, physically my best or mentally my best. And really the foods that make me feel um, healthy and happy are actually the ones that keep me lean. And that's really, you know, not being afraid of the fat, but, but being afraid of the sugars. Because if I, trust me, if I ate, you know, a chocolate brownie sundae every day, you know, I, that, would, that would definitely lead to me being severely overweight. So, um, but me eating, you know, two or three um, avocados a day doesn't have that same effect even though somebody would say, oh, but those are very fattening. So, you know, it's just it's, it's just seeing, you know, what foods, um, you know, work better with, with, with health and, and weight loss and keeping weight off. And yeah. I teach that. Yeah, that sounds like that's right. Uh, that You can always have a treat, but uh, basically you should be on a particular um, weight regimen. Well, I mean, a diet regimen that, that is good for you. And, and something else, people who I've heard this, that, they think they're hungry, they're really thirsty? That is very, very true. Uh, a lot of people are mostly walking around dehydrated. I'm, I perhaps am very dehydrated right now because once you're already thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So keeping hydrated is so important. Um, drinking at least eight, eight ounce cups of water a day or um, at least two liters a day would be most appropriate, especially in Florida. We're, you know, sweating and we're um, perspiring. Um, probably a faster rate than somebody that was in a colder climate and we really need to replenish those liquids and yes some people and if not all think that they're hungry but they're actually thirsty so that's why another reason um is to keep hydrated is to you know stave off hunger pains when um you know you may not be that hungry you just may need um, some liquids that's very true all right and let's go into sleep also if you're tired you eat yes sleep sleep we call it sleep hygiene it's crucial in weight loss and weight maintenance, weight maintenance because um, sleep really helps regulate your hormones, your, um, your cortisol level, your insulin level. And when you don't get adequate sleep, it actually creates stress on your body. And creating stress on your body will increase the stress hormone, um, most notably cortisol. And so um, and high cortisol will actually lead to um, more ravenous appetite and, yes, cause you to eat more, which in essence, cause weight gain. So I always recommend that my patients get a um, minimum of uh, eight hours of sleep. I know that's crazy hard, but, um, you know, just shut the TV off uh, earlier. Um, if you watch TV or you have your radio on or your computer on, your laptop, you're looking at your phone, those brain waves are actually moving um, at a rate where you can't get to sleep. So um, put that down, drink a, a cup of um, warm herbal tea, and uh, maybe even read a book, and that will settle your um, settle yourself before bed, and, and, and I think that would greatly help. Right. Well, I know that every all the advice that you give us is great. As a matter of fact, I was up till 2 o'clock last night because I was trying to finish our May issue, and you're right. I'm just thinking about what can I eat, and I just had a fantastic chicken salad that I made fresh before I came with, with everything good, and yet... Yep. I'm not really hungry, but I know I'm sleepy, and I know that's what it's doing because I guess the extra, and of course it's the carbs which you want to when you're sleeping <laughs> to give. Well, you... actually, it's the tryptophan and the protein that's making you sleep. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> carbs. A lot of eating a lot of carbs will make you lethargic, right? So yeah, it will have effect as well, which isn't the kind of lethargic we want. Um, and carbs usually do that. Um, they they cause a lot of a lot of issues. They can cause foggy brain. They can cause, um, you know, feelings of lethargy, even even feeling anxious and, um, you know, uh, nervous type of thing. But, um, again, everyone is different. Um, these are just things that I encounter uh, within myself and with most of my clients. Um, but, yeah, sticking with more high-protein foods, not necessarily a high-protein high, high protein, 
um, diet, but just eating high protein food at certain times will will um, you know make you <laughs> more sleepy. Have you um, how how you feel about people on Atkins diets? I'm not on one, but I was thinking there are some people who have been very successful on that. Um, and then now you're reading about the South Beach diet. What do you, you think? Know, I do I do try to keep my head up of all of these diets. I do know um, that Atkins is coming back um, for its popularity now um, with this whole fat is back thing. And how I feel about Atkins is that I think that, I, in my opinion, if I would prescribe it, I would modify it. Um, the, the Atkins diet in itself is a very, very high protein diet and very low carb. Um, and, it's, and it's also, uh, but it doesn't really stress uh, fat, so it's moderate fat. But what happens is with the Atkins diet is that people don't understand that um, what, eating excess protein can also turn to sugar, which turns to fat. So you've got to be careful with um, increasing your levels of protein to the amount that people think you, because you don't really need that much protein. And if the body doesn't need it, and your, like, your muscle doesn't need it, um, it's going to go to, um, it's going to turn into glucose through something called gluconeogenesis, which occurs in the liver. And so I'm not a big proponent of the Atkins diet. I am, um, though, a very big um, supporter of more of the keto diet. Okay. Um, well, we're going to have to yeah. put that put this on hold now because we're going to have to go. But I look forward okay. to seeing all our guests watching you and enjoying your speech at the Cure Symposium on May the 6th. Thank you so much, Sonny, and I'll see you then. Thank you for having me. It was always a pleasure. Bye. Bye.